Every one of us in our own ways, through our own trials, is making our way through a season. And in its great wins and hard moments and sudden losses, he missed it. He missed it. there's an answer we all seek to know and all want to find. What's our place? Where do we stand? Much goes into that accounting. And now starts the reckoning. The strength of a schedule. The power of a conference. The quality of a victory. The proof of our results. We work. We wait. To earn and learn the answer. Absolute dominant performance from J.K. Dobbins. Where do we rank? Are we in? Here we go. It is time for rankings reaction. The playoff committee has spoken, and now we will react to it as we do every single week. Presented by Cheez-Its, Mike Golick Jr., we're sitting on his couch, so we'll tell everybody that we're here uh, hanging out on your couch with the people. The couch gets a new addition this it week. Does. I'm Jason Fitz, Matt Berry joining us on the couch, Harry Douglas, Christine Williamson. Matt Berry, welcome to the couch. I love being on a couch because you have scratch and sniff Cheez-It pillows. Right. Mm -hmm. So now I can sit here and smell a Cheez-It pillow for an hour. We figured we had to do something <laughs> to make up for the fact that normally we see you hanging out in studio with Joey Galloway and Jesse Palmer. Yeah. Jesse Palmer, extremely handsome, so we figured we could Very. at least smell nice for you. Here's the deal. If, if it means between handsome Jesse and a Cheez-It pillow, always the Cheez-It pillow. Man, see? And I don't even care about Galloway. You heard Galloway's it here, like, Jesse. Wow, yeah, I was yeah, going to say, yeah. you heard that. Well, big big thank you to Cheez-It for classing yeah. up the joint so guys like Matt Barry will come hang out with us. We also have a rotating trophy that's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Every week, the rotating trophy behind you didn't rotate at first. It was just a little cup. This thing is breathtaking. Now it's, I mean, yeah. thank you. Who keeps this? Like, who gets this at the end? Uh, listen, you're going to have to fight me for it. We know how that's going to go. So just so you know. Mike gets the trophy at the end. But boy, will I put up a fight. This thing is much nice. better than the Sports Center studio. It's much better than the college football studio. Wow. Yeah, see, people have really underestimated the amount of time and effort that's gone into turning my <laughs> living room from my living room into... And the Jason Fitz's stuff all over it now, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. And and I have offered to move this over to my place several times. The answer is always no. So well, why no. would you when you can drop cheeses that he'll find in his couch in March? That's that is true. I have staggeringly bad cheese really in. Uh, yeah. By the way, with the, the cheese it what are these? The grooves? These grooves. are grooves. 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 It's groovy, it's baby. Rigid. These grooves. <laughs> <laughs> it's grooves. The grooves are spectacular. <laughs> uh, all right, so as we do every week, I sit here and eat a mouthful of cheeses, and we tell you what's happened from the college football playoff committee. Let's take a look at the most recent rankings. We'll start at the top. At number six, Oklahoma. Boomer. This sneaky, is going to be important. Sneaky, sneaky, that means sneaky, at number yeah. five, Utah sitting there. At number four, as expected, we have Georgia. This is where everything goes kind of the way we thought. At number three, we get Clemson. All questions were going to be about who would be number one in all the land. Well, it's the same. LSU goes to number two, Ohio State sits at number one. So we don't get any changes here in the top four, and then the obvious change becomes number five, Alabama. Later on, we'll get to show you how far they fell and what all this means. Any surprises, gentlemen? Any disagreements, Junior? Any disagreement with the top six? No, this is exactly what I expected in this, to be honest. And Utah being at five, and we talked to Heather Dinich on Golkin Wingo earlier today. The question mark was going to be at five. We knew top four would be the same in some order, in some order yeah. most likely the one we got. And then would Utah be given a chance mm -hmm. at five? Because if Oklahoma's up there at five, we're talking about a completely different set of circumstances, at least in my mind. Yeah, I, look, it's clear to me that they like what Utah's put on paper just as a football team because the, their schedule's not good. They don't no. have a, they don't have, their one loss to, this season is to a, a USC team that finished nine and three. And so if you look at body of work, I don't think that anybody's going to look at Utah and say, hey, that team's got a resume, that team has a schedule. But what's going to get Utah at the end is I think Oregon fell down to 13. Yep. Yeah. Right, they're down to 13. So you look at five versus 13 of the Pac-12 championship on Saturday, or on Friday rather, and then you've got six and seven with Oklahoma and Baylor. The winner of that game is going to get a big boost from a ranked team, and so that's why I think Utah could be in trouble. Right now, it looks as if they're one win away from getting in and one Georgia loss yeah. from getting in. I don't know if that's necessarily going to hold mm -hmm. come Big 12 championship weekend. See, I, I think if, if, if Utah barely beats Oregon, 
and Oklahoma wins convincingly, Oklahoma's going to get put in. Well, I, I mean, I, I think Oklahoma's actually I, either way. I think yeah. if Utah wins and Oklahoma wins, Utah's going to leapfrog them because as Matt I mean, was just Oklahoma. saying, Oklahoma. I'm sorry, Oklahoma's going to. Sorry, leapfrog. Oklahoma's going to yeah. leapfrog them because as Matt was just saying, there's just better. You have better runway. I keep using this yeah. expression every week, like the runway that's ahead of you. The runway that's ahead right now for Oklahoma gives them a chance for I'll, a better quality. Win. I'll tell you this: the one thing that could clip Oklahoma is we've already seen them beat Baylor. Yeah. And so now you're asking them to do the same thing twice, which doesn't make it any less impressive. But to beat the same team twice, should you get more credit for that than Utah beating an Oregon team that just a couple of weeks ago was fifth and sixth in the country until Arizona State beat them? Should they get more credit for beating the same team twice than Utah beating a new team in front of them that they hadn't played? See, that's why I think it goes – I think it's going to be based on how you beat them, though. Style points are going to matter, yeah. If if both the games are close, then I think Utah's going. Like, if it looks like the trophy. <laughs> yes, if it is anything but like then that. then if it looks like his pajamas. This is not pajamas. This is. Welcome, man. Welcome to the show. Like, that team's not going if that's As the game. As a hoodie, therefore, it's, it's a jumper. Nice. It's two pieces. This is a jumper. This is high fashion. I, I thought it was a jogger. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, jogger. It's a jogger. It's not a jumper because it's not connected to the waist, so it's a jogger. Okay, fine. It's a jogger, but it's not pajamas either way. I respect your fashion in this one, Fitz. It's. It's extremely you? you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it's it. This morning, the worst thing you could possibly I, wear. You know, I was going to wear the reindeer hoodie that I wore this morning on Gola Kawinga, but I thought I'd mix it up. It's it's Fitz, I don't care what nobody say. You continue to be you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you continue to be you. you yeah. You're comfortable in your own skin. I love it. So let me ask a very basic question right now. Okay. Who is, not what the committee thinks, like Harry Douglas, yep. who's the fifth best team in the country today? Utah. Matt. I would probably lean towards Utah. Complete top to bottom, defensively, offensively. I think they're. I think team. they'll smack you in the mouth. Mm-hmm. I I would agree on Utah. Like the more, and I think this is one of the things that happens is we knew Oregon was the name brand Pac-12. And that's that's right. what we said. Auburn at the beginning of the year was such an important game because they had a chance to be that flagship team for them right now. Mm-hmm. We've seen the ACC suffer from their flagship teams not being up to par. Miami, Florida State, those teams being down has hurt Clemson's case in the ACC. And so for the Pac-12, they needed Oregon to win that game, and they didn't. And so now, because of that, Utah and others have to pay for their sins with our lack of attention, even though when you watch Utah, that's, that's, that's a, a good damn point. good team. Dude, here's what it is about Utah. It's two things. One, I got into this argument last week on SportsCenter that people, there's nothing sexy about nothing Utah. Flashy. Exactly. Nothing flashy. Nothing sexy about it. They don't get national attention, but the one thing that they do, they make football, like they do ugly nice. Yes. Does that make sense? They're not lighting up the scoreboard like Ohio State, Clemson, and LSU. They're not going to do what Jalen Hurts and Oklahoma are going to do. They just make ugly football look good, and if that's – don't punish them for that. They look, George is not winning any beauty contests. Ooh. No. Oh. <laughs> now, look, you're not – I'll tell you, Matt Baird, I'm so glad we brought him on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, oh, you're, you're rich. Oh, you a weekly thing. Harry's been better against Georgia. Let's remember Harry Douglas' point. Shut the table. You want to head to toe, red and black. Harry Douglas actually said a couple of weeks ago, Georgia doesn't do anything well. That was his quote. <laughs> they don't. I've yet, like, be my like, god. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are tap Hold dancing that. like Bing Crosby in a Christmas you movie right now. No, Georgia is the beneficiary of their past, right? They yes. play a really nice defense. Jake Fromm has not looked great. They don't really have a nice defense, not elite defense. They don't really have, nice defense. They don't have a dominant number one receiver, and DeAndre Swift is banged up. I just don't think that Georgia's a. They're in there because they're Georgia. That's a brand range. Hey, now you okay. know, first, no, hold on. You know L's going to get you, right? Yeah, but I've dealt with that for three years. Okay, okay. Yeah, just want to make sure. You want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. From all so the way sure. over her house. Yeah, she's actually <laughs> barking her way over. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, worth noting for the SEC title game, you mentioned DeAndre Swift banged up. They're going to be without Lawrence Cager yep. in that game. And then uh, George Pickens, first their young half. wide receiver, missing the first half after that fight in their last game. So, the stat I saw today that was pretty damning for that is Jake Fromm completes 73% of his passes to those two guys, 53%, I think, right about to every other receiver on that team. And I'm going to tell you what I think LSU is going to do. LSU has this secondary to man you up. That's it. And you put the extra guy in the box to negate the run game. LSU is going to blow them out. LSU, too, defensively outside. They're oh, doing yeah. a good job in the perimeter. You can get them in the middle of the field. That's what it is. Del Pitt's healthy. Look. 
Yeah. At the end of the day, I, what has the line come out on that yet? Ah, uh, let me I check. Mean, yeah, sure it what is it? Twenty-two. Well. Oh wow. Well, well. <laughs> I'm with you though. I think it's gonna be close. No, I, I think it's gonna be a blowout. I think yeah. LSU is gonna absolutely clobber. Give think, me, here's a good question. Speaking of championship weekend, give me the one conference championship power five that you think is going to be the closest. Not the ACC. Closest nope. or close? Because none of them are going to be close. Like, I think you're close. Big 12. Oh, yeah, big 12. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was a big 12. Yeah, I'll give you the big 12. Big 12 for sure. I could, man, I, I could I, see the Pac-12 championship being okay. sneaky close. Yes, Again, see, I, now, I Utah, Utah's, Utah's like put up third. Finesse thir- Oregon is. Yeah. Well, no, Oregon up front is not a finesse team. Oregon up front is Mario Cristobal's baby. That might be the best offensive line in college football. And, and them against the you know, Bradley and, Bradley and, and, and that say. Utah defensive <laughs> line is going to okay. be a battle. Yeah. But Utah's put up 30 points in every game but one this year. Like, that's an offensive football team yep. that's sneaky a lot better than we but get But they do it late. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's going to be 17-10 at the half, and then they'll get their points. By on. the way, the uh, opening line for LSU Georgia, LSU touchdown and a half favorite. So Ooh, made the points. What? Christine, so I'm far on that. social media, you're monitoring it. We getting any big objections out there to where things are? Okay. Well, first, I would just like to say, Coach Each at Coach Each Lauren loves your one. Well, she or he called it a onesie. I. It's not a onesie. It's Either a, what way. do we say? It's a jumper. It's a. It's, it's, a, a, it's a, a jogger. jogger. It's a jogger. a jogger. It's a jogger. It's not a one. You're not jogging in that. Uh, but I did want to ask a question <laughs> regarding Yogging. these rankings. So when you look at the top three, Ohio State, LSU, and Clemson, they're all undefeated. If the BCS still existed, who do you guys think would be in the national championship? Ohio State, LSU. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it I think it'd be those two. Just it, be interesting right now. Let's see what the strike is. So the, we're getting to the time of year now. We always say that strength of resume, that strength of record metric yeah. is the one that ends up closely mm-hmm. aligning. So as of this week, LSU and Ohio State are one and two, two. and that Clemson is four and yep. Georgia's three. So, But here's the thing. with like, I think there are three number one teams in the country right now. I think, and I'll steal this from Joey Galloway. He did this with us on College Football Final this week. He's like, you could sit here and say Clemson, LSU, Ohio State are all the three best teams in the country, because they are. Yep. And if you look, I'm not going to penalize Clemson, one, because they play the schedule that's in front of them. ACC's down, not their fault. They had one close game against North Carolina. I'm not going to penalize any team for that. But North Carolina 12, team is going bowling this year. Six and six, uh, North Mac Carolina Brown. North Carolina team that's offensively ranked, I think, in the top 20. Yeah, yeah. Sam Howell, Sam good Howell's young quarterback. But if you look at their margin of victory in every other game, they're beating the hell out of yeah, people, yeah. and they're not thinking about it. No. Yep. The last, like, what, six, seven game run has been borderline offensive. The and things and they just beat a team. South Carolina team, you know who happens beat to beat Georgia. Dominant Can we Georgia. talk about okay, that so, By 35. You're throwing so much shade on Georgia. <laughs> Let me ask you a question then. We'll, we'll quickly, we'll look at this. Uh, if you're looking one, two, three, and I think we all agree that there are three great teams in college football this year, then there's a huge line. Who is the fourth best team in the country? You guys all decided Utah de- deserves or is fifth. Who, if you if you were just laying it out there and say this is the fourth best team, Harry, you don't think it's Georgia? Who is it? <laughs> right now? Yeah, it would be Utah. So you would take Utah at four over Georgia? They're too. They're they're they're, they're so balanced. If we're, if we're saying so like, re- if we're saying resumes aside, yeah, I'm just asking you. Neutral field right fourth. now. You oh, okay. an uncomfortable amount of resume money. Resume side. One? Yeah. I, I think, think Utah. Utah. Utah's a better football team than Georgia? I think so. I think they're I Georgia. We're, talk, we're talking about a team who lost on the road against USC, I think on a Friday night. What did it was somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't even lost it. it. Look, I just – here's my thing with, with the committee and what they have in front of them. Should this all play out? Let's say Utah beats Oregon. Let's say – I don't really care, Oklahoma or Baylor. Probably more Baylor because of the lack of na- brand name that Oklahoma is. Committee has a real opportunity now to prove all the naysayers wrong to say we don't pick the same four teams every year. Yep. Three of them are locked. So why not just throw Utah in there? I'm not going to give you some big scientific reason why they need to be. Just throw them in and see what happens. Yeah, but, you, if, but you know why I think they wouldn't? Because when you look at Oklahoma, you look at two guys, CeeDee Lamb and Jalen Hurts, Jaylen, who yep. are star, yep. star players. I agree. You look over at the Utah side, you have guys besides Bradley and I, and I and, and Huntley, who's doing a good job, but they aren't they aren't household names. No, I, not, I would I would you know lose I mean? my mm, with both of you if we were in the committee together because my my charge is to pick the four best. I don't care if somebody I don't care if it's the same four every year, and I don't care if they have so superstar who's better players. Than Utah? If we want to make the argument, and I agree with you, I yeah. think Utah is better than Georgia today. As long as we're making the argument because Utah is better. I just don't want to use any, like, I, I hope that we don't get to a spot where, well, we're just, you know, these three are good, so let's just pick. But see, that's why I don't get into those type of conversations, because it's not hypothetical. One of them is going to take care of itself. 
Yes. And yeah. when we get into all of these, let's call it what it is. And I've said this on TV before, so I won't get in trouble for saying it. The ranking show is a television show. Yes. It's a television show to give you a good idea of what these 13 committee members are thinking. The one ranking that matters happens next week. The final. And so we could sit here and, and talk about Georgia versus Utah and Oklahoma versus Georgia. But at the end of the day, Georgia's playing LSU. That's going to handle itself. Mm -hmm. yep. And we're going to know right away, look, he and I are on the same page with Georgia. I don't think they're going to win the game. I don't think it's going to be close. If they were to show up and find a way to score more than 13 points, then maybe they have an opportunity. I just don't see it happening. And then you're down to that argument. What if, let's do this. Georgia loses. Oregon or uh, Utah loses. Yep. And Baylor wins. Baylor has to go in. Is Baylor four? They have to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They have to. They go I, from yeah, seven. seven now, yeah. I think, yeah. You know what? Honestly, yeah. I think even if Utah wins and Georgia loses like we expect, and you get Baylor going and doing exactly what Oklahoma did last year, which is erasing their one loss in the regular yeah. season in a game where they look dominant for a half yeah. and then didn't get the ball for more than like six minutes in the second half, essentially, I could, I could see a world where the committee looks at them and says, you know what? We already pegged you as the team in the Big 12 that plays defense, so we've got that side of the ball checked yeah. off for you in our, mi our right. minds. And you erase that one loss on a big stage. Maybe we'd even think if the Pac-12 title game looks ugly like it did last year at all, maybe then we'd think of even jumping and, with Baylor. And that's why, Matt, to your point, when you say the rankings don't matter every week till the last one, you're right. But what you can look at are the tendencies of what this committee values. Exactly. Sure. And that's why I will say I think that the fourth best team in the country is Utah. I also think that the winner of the Big 12 is the one that's going to get the fourth seat. Because what the committee is setting up for us by what they're telling us exactly. mm -hmm. is they believe that there is a better matchup coming and there's going to be more equity. And they, they continue to look at the schedule as a whole as some great meaning, you know, and I'll yeah, keep going body back of to work. Yeah. Yeah, I keep I keep looking at the fact that you know, we're only a few weeks away from seeing Minnesota below Penn State after they beat Penn State because it's not just about head-to-head. -head. Like, there is this big picture that they're looking at, and right. that's the one takeaway we can get. If the Pac-12 wants to be upset, blame Oregon. Oregon screwed them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So exactly. With, exactly. with all this conversation about yeah, where everybody else ranks, let's make sure you guys are caught up on the next group, seven through ten. So uh, at this point, up. oh, we did. We, we grabbed hands back. That, oh, that, that, was, that was very. Yeah. That was super. That was so yeah. 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 The difference is I reached back for it again. After I was like, oh, I, I thought that Mike was giving me like a subtle tap to tell me what was going on. Baylor moves up two to to number seven. Significant here. Wisconsin takes a big jump. It jumps four spots up to eight. Florida jumps two spots up to nine. Penn State sits at 10 where they are. Any surprises here, guys? I mean, Baylor jumps up. We just talked about the equity they get. Any surprise with Wisconsin going up eight? No, no I think because that. Because they, they're, you beat Minnesota and you're about to play for the Big Ten Championship game. So I don't think them being outside the top 10 would be valid. But I do, I do not think Penn State deserves to be in the top 10. Yeah, Penn I, State, the last two weeks, Penn State has not looking good at all. They're very they're underwhelming struggling. against Rutgers. They're struggling yeah, to win games. Um, it was was it two weeks ago or three weeks ago? They had to have a late score to to to, to decide the game yeah, on them winning. So I just don't think Penn State looks good right now. Well, and those rankings matter too because of the Rose Bowl and yep. who's gonna who's yep. gonna represent the Big Ten. But look, Wisconsin, what Wisconsin at eight does and all it does is it makes Ohio State look really really good yep. when they go and do to Wisconsin what they did in October, which is beat them and, and get another top ten win on their resume. Which is going to create the conversation between who's one and two based on the equity they get in their championship. Let me tell you something about like the num number one. Yeah. The only reason number one matters this year is you do not want to play Clemson in the it's first exactly. You want nothing to do with Clemson. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. That's real. Christine, what are we seeing on social media? Uh, so I wanted to ask another question because, See. Matt, you were just talking about this. What if Wisconsin beats Ohio State? I think the top three right now are in no matter what. Okay. Yeah. No, no matter what. Clemson, too? Would Yes. So Clemson loses if to Virginia, they're, they're still in? Yes. See, I, 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 I said the oh, same okay. thing. Okay, I, I actually disagree thing. with that. That would Because be I don't think Clemson gets enough respect in they general. Don't. Like, if they would have lost to South Carolina, we talked about this on Saturday, yeah. if they would have lost to South Carolina, they would have been out. Yep. But Georgia lost to South Carolina, and they're number four. So I feel like that Clemson team just historically does not get the respect. Well, they, I think historically deserve. Clemson's gotten a lot of respect, but my argument against what you're saying right yeah. there is, who's Clemson? Like, I understand True. that Clemson looks like the best. Uh, we've talked about this this morning. I would not be shocked at all to see Clemson just destroy everybody through the college football playoff and, and win the championship. Would not surprise me at all. 
But resume has to matter at some point. Like, there has to be well, some conversation. Yeah, but who are you looking at? Go ahead. Because my thing is, if you put Clemson on a field with Ohio State, they're going to give Ohio State hell from an offensive standpoint, mm -hmm. yep. scoring points. You put them against anybody in this top five or top six, they're going to hold their own. I don't care who they're playing right now. Clemson is yeah, one of the right. most complete teams in the country ago. right Let's now. go back to three years ago when USC at the final ranking was playing so well and Clay Helton had and for some reason decided not to start Sam Darnold until three games into the season. By the end of the year, USC was clearly one of the best teams in the country, but they had three losses. Three, yeah. So they had three losses, so it's like, well, you can't include them in the conversation. You can't. Because ultimately, resume, resume has to matter. matter. So okay, who you, so let me ask, who you played right, has to matter. Let me ask well, you about, three losses eliminated yeah. them. Let that. me ask you about Clemson's resume, though. What are they supposed They scheduled Texas A&M out of the SEC. Yeah. That's an out-of-conference win. Or, who's supposed game. to be decent this year. Oh, and, they schedule, it's their and, fault. and they schedule South Carolina. So they're playing two SEC schools. No one thought South Carolina was going to be 4-8 and eight and as bad as they are. Yeah. And, blew both and it's their out. rivalry game, so they're not going to change that. But that's two out-of-conference SEC opponents. Mm -hmm. Like, let's run through some of these other non-conference schedules and find me a Power 5 team that has scheduled two teams out of the SEC. But were they... Did well, they turn out to be good teams? But but I, I know I, but that's a good point. Is do you deserve credit? Because a lot of what we always talk about too is the committee looking at this and saying who you play out of conference matters, meaning mm -hmm. record. But you're penalized for you know the SEC teams, you know scheduling FCS teams and right. going for cupcakes out of conference. How much credit do you get, or should you get, for the effort of saying, hey, we tried to schedule these teams? Like hell, who's to say that a couple of years ago, Ohio State and Oklahoma play early in that season? Maybe one of those teams was just awful one right. year for whatever reason. But you scheduled what could have been one of the biggest brand name Power 5 teams. You don't control what they end up being because these schedules are made that far out. Correct. And that's the other thing, too, is by the end of the year, like we always talked about ranked wins. By the end of the year, if you look at a team that gets credit for a ranked win in week two or three, that team may not even be 500 by the time yeah, you get to the end exactly. of the season. So what exactly counts as a ranked win now? Ranked at the time? I've, o I've always been nuts. baffled by yeah. that. Well, I, and again, I'm not... But should, should it I, I got to be clear here. Like, I, 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 before everybody asked me on Twitter, I think that Clemson... I, I, if I had to pick one team right now to win it all, I would pick Clemson. All right? That being said, if they lose the ACC championship game, then I do think at some point, whether it's your fault or not, like that it's just sort of the collateral damage of what happens but who when would you, you put played. in ahead of them? There you go. Well, well, and that's, 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 that because depends on that's how the rest true. of the I was going to say. But so. I don't think it matters. So you, you, he's right. I don't you think it matters. You can't be the third best team in the country for the entire <laughs> season. <laughs> and then because Virginia finds it with an onside kick and a Bryce Perkins miraculous game, all of a sudden you're not one of the top three teams. That's true. I just can't. Just because let's do Georgia. That's where, that's let's where. use our litmus test, Georgia. Georgia, if somehow beat LSU, they lost to South Carolina at home. And so they're not going to be punished for that from a, losing to a bad team, but Clemson loses in their conference championship in the final week and they're going to get punished. That's true. That's what Dabo that's was true. talking about. People like that's you. what Dabo was talking Rat about. Rat poison. Oh, yeah. man. That's no, what Dabo, Dabo, Dabo was ranting about. Dabo was talking to the committee to make sure that if a miraculous <laughs> thing happens, because let me be clear, yeah, I, exactly. I can see them winning that game 50 to 3. Yeah. Like, but if something miraculous happens, Dabo's just covering his, you know, what well, he's covering his tushy tush. Uh, what else I is feel, that? Thing? I feel like Dabo's always kind of been like, you guys don't respect us. Get, show us some respect. Well, it's respect. the full transformation in Nick Saban in Alabama. Like now, mm -hmm. Clemson and Dabo have become the thing that for so long. Because I guarantee, a lot of people have been critical of Dabo getting up and saying that, saying, how are you complaining with all the success you're having? If you dressed everything in that up in that Alabama Crimson, all the Clemson fans would be saying the same thing no to question. them right now. So it's just the transformation coming full circle. That's very true. That's true. What about Alabama, though, falling away? They, they, they might not even get a new, a new Year's Day Bowl. That's a May felt of 12. Hey, hey. We're not to Alabama yet. All right, oh, we're not. Like, oh, 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 we're on a couch eating cheese. Where We're not are you? Holding the somewhat tablet set. You know what? Fine, fine. I, where we'll, are we'll you on your little ground? No, 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 no. I'll just go all the way down to where the Alabama conversation is and give all them the time way. to throw up. Alan. 
a fancy graphic and let's show everybody 11 through 15 if we can do that. We I don't do know. Have fancy throw, graphics, right we do have fancy graphics. Oh, well, let's run them. We're I nice mean, well, you know, you got to give them a second. They're going to pull it up and make sure that everything's good. In the meantime, by the way, while they're pulling up, it's rankings reaction. Matt Berry over here just causing all sorts of mm. <laughs> Harry Douglas, uh, Mike Golick Jr., Christine Williamson, I'm Jason Fitz. My scratch and uh, and I think, you know, I don't know. I'm just going to throw it out here. We'll just, I'll just read this out loud. Uh, 11 through 15, Auburn is at 11, Alabama's 12, Oregon's 13. Uh, my my voice crack is 14. <laughs> Michigan and puberty still undefeated. And Notre Dame at number 15. So Notre Dame moving up the spot, baby. Let's go camping. Is that, that Will someone explain to me the Notre Dame? So they finished 10 and 2. 10 and 2. What are the rules? I should know this, but I don't. The rules with Notre Dame in a New Year's Six if they get 10 wins. I'm not. You know what? Even even me, I'm not actually sure with that. My understanding there's has been. The, hey, there's the graphic. That oh, what's yeah. that? That <laughs> is that graphic coming that up. That is that that Well yeah. done, Matt Barry. Thank you. That's, that's, well, that's great. Matt, to, uh, to what you've said, all the basically all the people that cover Notre Dame football that I follow, who've kind of been tracking the yeah. bowl stuff, have made it sound like for a while it's almost been predetermined. It's Camping World Bowl for them is what it looks like, which I think is either Notre Dame or an ACC in a Big Twelve. I want to party. Say. I'll do that. So. I, be, I believe that's where it looks like they'll end up. So, for whatever reason, I think them in the New Year's Six, I don't know if there's just okay. a 10 win tie. Because back in the day in the BCS era, wouldn't it if they had 10 wins, they were in a BCS game? Yep, exactly. I don't know if something held like that to New Year's Why so, is Notre Dame not 13 right now in the rankings? Because they got throttled by Michigan? It doesn't matter. Michigan has three losses. I. You know what? When the head-to-head -head is losses, that man. stark, like if that game had been a nail-biter that Michigan won on a field goal, you could sell me on that. But Michigan kicked our you-know-what's in, and so they get the credit of being above us. But I who's got – look at the two losses Notre Dame does have, though. It's Michigan and Georgia. Georgia. Oh, yeah. That's, they that's got a hell of a schedule. Notre Dame's yeah. schedule was <laughs> – no, And Notre Dame, I mean, the, that was the surprising part to me, was Georgia, who's sitting at number four right now, Notre Dame lost by two points or right. whatever the hell it was yep. on the road in Athens in one of the tougher games of the year – the, the Michigan game is still inexplicable to me how poorly that went because of some rain in that setting. It wasn't some rain. The fact, the that fact, was a lot of rain. It was, <laughs> it, was, it was reminiscent of that NC State game they played in the monsoon a couple of years ago yeah. that was you know, an absolute bloodbath. I'm going to throw a, another curveball to the, the fantastic people back at, at Bristol and see if we can get our Eliminator 5000. Oh, good. Uh, that, good. That's going to be oh. the CFP Eliminator 5000. We'll stall for a moment while they get this uh, amazing. We got a record. robot too, man. We have a robot, we'll man. We'll have a robot. Super fast. Fancy. Now that I'm going really? all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here it is. is. <laughs> yeah, this is. Oh, look at him. Oh, there he is. Crazy little man. Sure that guy. Wants. I hate how it tries to smile at me like we're cool. He looks like that. Hell, he says initializing <laughs> all systems. Look at this. He's already eliminated Baylor, Oregon, and Penn State. Who's he eliminate now? I can't believe he eliminated Baylor. They're not out. Oh, Baylor Alabama did that before. Out. He did that before. Now. Oh, look at that. What the hell Michael Lee Jr. is in there, too. <laughs> That's supposed to be Notre Dame. Recycling? I don't know. Look know. at that. You better right. pull Baylor out of that garbage can. I mean, that is a fair point. What was that? What he happened? added <laughs> Alabama and Minnesota to the trash can. Like, they're eliminated. They're done. Oh, they're out. They're they're, out. There's no chance that they make the Minnesota college football Minnesota dropped play. like a stone. Yes. Good Lord. Yeah, that was one of those stories that was going to be really, really good as long as it lasted. Yep. They've got good skill position players. They're going to Tanner Morgan's a sophomore. You know, P.J. Flax got a good thing built in there. Yep. I mean, they're probably going you know, to – both the, those those two wide receivers are both draft eligible, right? Well, no, no, no. I don't think Bateman is. I okay, Bateman Bateman's might be a not. Sophomore. Bateman's a sophomore. They're both good. But I think Josh is a senior. Yeah, 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 I was going to say, those are two NFL wideouts they got there for I'll sure. make the argument, though, that this might be the best thing that could have happened in Minnesota because P.J. Flick wins that. I mean, it doesn't matter how many how many Girl Scout cookies they sell. They're losing him to somebody. Contract extensions aside, I know uh, buyouts are buyouts. Like, yeah, yeah I, so. I think he's going to be there for a while. I think if you look at what he has, yes, if you look at what he has, if he knows that he can win the Big Ten West at Minnesota. Yeah. And some coaches, look, we knew he was going to get out of uh, Western Michigan to go build a program somewhere else. He's at a power five at a program that's proven they can compete in the Big Ten West. I don't know that he's going to be in such a hurry to leave. Because everything that glitter isn't gold, Mike. That's right. Don't mess with happy. Fitz. You know what? I'm messing with I know Jesus a coach right that now. did that. A coach that left Louisville and went to Texas and should have stayed at Louisville while Louisville was still. Oh, man, you're talking, you're talking about Charlie Strong, man. Yeah, what that's that, exactly who I'm talking about. Let that man have some time to chill right now, <laughs> Listen, all right? Listen, he, he shouldn't have never left Louisville. He's right. Shouldn't have left Louisville. Sometimes Everything when, that glitter is, isn't gold. Sometimes when coaches get really aspirational and they want to fix that next thing, if I'm Mike Norvell with what he's doing at Memphis, man, he's going to have his choice. 
but that doesn't mean this round of jobs is the best round yep. of jobs for him. We are seeing I think that's that happen. A great point with Mike. I think yeah. what he's built in Memphis and the way Memphis has come around him uh, over the next couple of years, it feels like he could have a, a much better stack of jobs in the next two or three years than he has right now. So there's you're a gambling on yourself there because remember this year, last this time last year, Dino Babers was the guy. Oh man, yep. that's Dino Babers was the guy in college football, and now there's so always one of the, the risk. I think it. that stands out as impressive for Norvell is that Memphis last year looked much different than they do this year. Yeah. So Mike Norvell's been able to turn around. Yeah. By the way, Memphis, uh, the highest of the group of fives right now. So they put themselves in a New Year's Six, New yeah. Year's Six situation. I mean, they're facing, when the AAC go to the Cotton Bowl, where our, I think our predictor had them playing Alabama. So Is that what the robot had? I think, that, I think that's what the ESPN.com <laughs> oh. predictor is. Is he a robot, <laughs> is he a robot too, or is that just no, an algorithm? No, this robot's you, yeah, yeah, He only yeah. works like he's done, he's uh, done his... Uh, I'm he, afraid of robots, not algorithms. You know so. what I'm not afraid of? I'm not afraid of commandments, Mike. And it is time for some college oh, football God, commandments. More of our talent. production value here, man. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at this. I tried to set it up. I said everything that glitter is in gold. Yeah, so we got these, <laughs> we got okay, these tablets. Right. They're pretty nice. A running the, argument on whether it's shall not or shall yeah, not. Yeah, like I say, shall or shalt when we it comes to the about commandments. We talked last week. Thou shalt not. Oh, wait, wait, yeah. thou it's shall. Is it shall or shalt? <laughs> I'm going shalt. It's shalt. shalt. It is it shalt. Is shalt. I shalt. googled it. Thou shalt shalt not. Yeah, I think it's shall. Well, so, okay, so, it doesn't mean it's shalt, wrong. But yeah, but it's 2019, so now it's like sh it, the language has changed. Damn. Yeah, everything is Ebonic. Stay, stay woke, Fitz. <laughs> right, so, so let's so we've got, Just to recap them, don't lose two games. Don't get blown out. Don't be in the group of five. Be in the SEC, preferably. Don't lose after, I think it was, uh, don't lose within the last two weeks of the regular season unless you're Alabama. Have a star player. Have strength of resume. I screwed that one up. You said thou shall not be in the Big 12. Fitz, you done made a mistake. I know. That's why I don't write you do things like that anymore. So Well, that's well and now this one's even been called into question, so I'm going to steal the easy one and give you the wrong one, Fitz. <laughs> Amazing. Thou shall not lose to Oregon. Mm -hmm. Because if Utah loses to Oregon, they ain't got no shot at this. So mm -hmm. that one is pretty easy and fits you get the wrong one now. Sorry in advance. <laughs> Would you like me to hold huh. these for The Goalie family. No, 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 no. Thou no. shalt not. By the way, let's note how much better my handwriting is. It's just smaller. <laughs> if and I had caps. Input, better penmanship. Lose to Virginia. I don't even know if I spelled that right. It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> spelled that with a Y? She just put V-A. No, no, V-I-R-G-I-N-A. No. <laughs> Keep it simple. <laughs> Wait, you're good. Cavaliers. V-A-R-G-I-N-A. You were clear. It's good. I got it. G-I-N-I-A. No, no, that's my N. My N goes like this. Yeah, I'm saying. Vir Virginia. You have Virginia. <laughs> it's Virginia. Yeah, no, it's no, 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 that's I had the I. He's got I the I. I. I got the I. I can verify that. <laughs> no, R O C K. The C is silent. <laughs> Look, I've been up since 3:30 in the morning. I can't spell. All right. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all right. So that's our that's our commandments. So Although we've already had some di dis yeah, dispute well, on say, the idea. Of, the idea of Clemson still getting in with a loss to Virginia is something that had hadn't occurred to me. But the way you laid it out makes it a lot more interesting. Yeah. Top three are in. That's locked. That's, we're doing. We're playing for one spot next week. And I'll say this: you got to look at where was Virginia ranked the entire year. Virginia was ranked just about almost every week from I think three to. I'll say yeah, for the two weeks the ago. They were, yeah. Because remember, they that matchup against Notre Dame. Yes. It was, it was a big matchup. They lost that game, but Virginia. It's not like they've been some slosh team the so entire you, year. So you're telling me, Clemson loses, Georgia loses. So three and four are out, and let's say Utah and Oklahoma win. It's just that easy to pop them up. Oh, it's no, no way. And Can bounce I say, Clemson it's out. It's no way that's in weird. hell. It would. That would be another one of those anarchy moments where you'd have two one-loss conference champions saying, "All right." That team just lost their conference title. They've got one loss like us, and you're going to put them in over us still. What more can we do for you? Especially an Oklahoma true. team who would have a few ranked wins, yeah. more ranked wins than Clemson would have all year. They should have thought about that before they lost to Kansas State, too. That's true. Oh, oh listen. Yeah. I, no if argument. me, I'd get rid of the conference championship. Yeah. Oh, see, <laughs> now we're talking. You a pod guy? Because I'm a big pod guy. I don't, need, I don't need Clemson to tell me that they're better than Virginia. I don't need to see that. Well, because you've well, seen a whole season why, that tells you that. And that's why, even to, to that end, when we did the mock committee uh, over the last couple of years, and I know you've done that process too, 
I, I flat out asked him at the committee if there was ever interest in playoff expansion that included automatic bids for conference championships. And the answer to that is a quick and very blatant no. No. But they're not interested in any system that automatically rewards a conference championship. And this is where I have to remind people, when you have four playoff teams and there are five power conferences, guess what? A system was built that wasn't going to include all conference champions anyway, so they've already devalued conference champions. That's right. So since it's already been devalued and they have no interest in changing it, it's time for everybody to accept that they don't matter. Which is as they should because divisions are set up arbitrarily. So you, like, I mean, the Big Ten's a great example. Michigan would probably have been to a few Big Ten titles had no it not been question. for being yep. on the same side of the division as the Ohio State juggernaut. They so do need to change un that. Until you're willing yeah. to have everyone go to something Just like the Big 12 deal yeah, where the, the two Robin. best teams actually play each other. Or pod, shout out to Bill Conley and the rest of the analytics people who are all in on this pod model. That would also give us... Because Walk me through the pod model. So the pod model essentially dissolves the uh, the uh, divisions and conferences and replaces it with pods, depending on the amount of teams in there. Because that's also focused on not only round robin play, right. but you look at a conference like the SEC. I forget it was Texas A and M and someone else. We're only going to play once in like a span of I think ten or twelve years. Yeah. Because of the way the divisions are set up in the conferences. So the pods would put you with three other teams geographically close to you. It would have you play every team in the conference every four years. I like that. Mm. And so you would get more of a true sense of who each team was across that, mm. and it would give you round-robin play that would ultimately spit out the two best teams in your conference That's title. How I think it was this year was the first time Georgia and A&M had played since A&M had joined the SEC. Correct. Yes, that was correct. it. That was okay. That was the one I was thinking of yeah, then, that, so correct. So all of this conversation about the value of conference championships, well, let's get to our panic button matchup uh, for this week, and that is there a conference There are so many bells champion. and whistles in this thing. Look at that. See? We, got an hour, we got an hour commercial free to film, Matt. <laughs> Georgia LSU is the panic button matchup. The question is, can Georgia, uh, uh, I mean, yeah. for Georgia, because I'd be panicking against LSU. Uh, look, I, I just keep trying to find a way that this is a game, and I can't. I can't find it. Now, LSU has a lot of talent on defense. It hasn't necessarily played up to what the names and what we thought they would play over the course of the year. But this is not a Georgia offense that's played well enough either. So I don't see them being able to take advantage and, of the disadvantage. And I think special teams goes to LSU. Yep. <clears throat> because Georgia, for some reason, they're having a hard time, a hard time fielding punts. They can't get kickoff returns uh, fielded. So if, if they have a turnover, it's definitely going to be over. Because if you give LSU an extra possession with the weapons that they have on offense, it's a wrap. But given the, given the recruiting classes that Georgia's had over the last few years, given the hype that they've had, deservedly so, and how close they've been to beating Alabama, this has to feel like a quick, swift kick in the no-no places to Georgia fans who are looking at it saying, we should be better. Like, this, is a, this, this whole era feels like lost opportunity to the greatness that they thought they would Yeah, but if you look at how and what Georgia's lost over the past couple of years. It's like skill position wise. Like they, they lost, lost like a three, lot four yeah. receivers alone. They last lost year. a lot of talent. <clears throat> and look, Jake Fromm's been the constant. The offensive line's been the constant. The defensive side of the ball has been really good. But the fact that we keep judging Georgia based on the narrow losses to Alabama, they're just different teams. And this team, Georgia is good. They're not great. And that's just who they are. Georgia there's, there's is nothing, this, in the NFL is this year's New England Patriots. Yeah, they're not, there's nothing wrong with being really, really good. They're a damn good football team. They're just not playoff great, and that's fine. And Fromm can help his team out by being better. Like yeah. he, he's he's I mean, having a terrible year in my eyes. Yeah. That's the other thing that's Cost frustrating for Georgia he, fans, right? Like, it's why do you look at me like that? He is missing wide oh, open I'm, receivers I'm, on touchdowns, I'm not slant saying, routes. A slant is the easiest ball to complete. I'm not NFL. saying he's not. I always I just mean, looked. I any, always any just looked at Georgia's <laughs> situation. The problem for them is, quite frankly, in the past you had too much. You had all those juggernaut running backs, and then those wide receivers. I never felt like throwing the ball was something that was all that valuable to Georgia in a lot of those instances. Like even when they had all those receivers, Jake Fromm was never averaging over 200 yards but a game. But they always it's had like, someone ahead of DeAndre Swift. Like, they always had two backs. Yeah. There was always a two. Uh, uh, last year was Elijah Holyfield. There was always a dude behind the dude. And now it's Swift, and they've got a couple of other guys that rotate in there. But nothing to the cop. When DeAndre Swift was your second option at running back, it makes you frightening. Yeah. Oh, you and it, it, but this it is makes you want to challenge on Kirby that. Smart, though. Is he going to self-evaluate himself and say, okay, Maybe this old style, pro style offense that we run, maybe we need to change next year. Coach O did it at LSU. Yep. Everybody else is doing Saban it. Saban did it at Alabama. Right, is he going to self evaluate himself and, and say, this is what we need to go to? Do I need to bring somebody else into this program that can coach this offense up to be 
more spreadish, more throw the ball down the field? Because I honestly think Jake Fromm has to come back to school this year. Well, here's the other thing. Keep in mind, when they had Justin Field, people thought that that's what was going to happen. They got this dual-threat quarterback, number one right quarterback in the country. Yep. He's going to come in and revolutionize it. And then all Jake Fromm kept doing was beating out Eason and beating out Fields. And he just proved that he was the alpha dog in that locker room. But I'm with you. There's got to be something to give it some bounce. But for, for Georgia, Kirby Smart's late game management is a bigger oh, problem. Yes. Well, and I, I was going to say, I would put some of it on that because it's not like Georgia play can't calls. score points oh, in offensive. certain instances. Lest we not forget, they put 54. Now, I get it. Oklahoma's defense wasn't great last year. Yeah. But you got to be doing something right in multiple phases to put 54 up on somebody in a game the way they did in a playoff game yeah. last year. You're watching Rankings Reaction presented by... Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. Look at that. Group, uh, group effort there. Love you, Mike Golick Jr., Jason Fitz, uh, Christine Williamson, Harry Douglas, and Matt Berry is our special guest today. You're, we're live with you after every one of the rankings uh, on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, the ESPN app, or everywhere. So we did this a couple weeks ago, and we're bringing it back. We've all seen The Mandalorian, right? Everybody's a fan of The Mandalorian? I have not seen it. I haven't seen it either. I wasn't going to wow. say that. Wow. Sorry. Jimmy now on Disney Plus. Well, we all know the sensation. Well, we know Baby Yoda. Where's <laughs> Baby Yoda? Right. That's the question we are asking this week. Where in the world is Baby Yoda? Oh. And so we got Baby Yoda right there. Oh, hanging out, watching Clemson take down South Carolina. Baby Yoda. Oh, Baby Yoda perched up high Paul on Paul Bunyan axe. axe. Is, might, might be the coolest trophy in college. I would agree. <laughs> Baby Yoda, wrong place, wrong time during Alabama Auburn. Oh, man. Baby Yoda trying to break up a fight. It's just, just like I flying. Say, I thought that was... I thought, <laughs> Baby Yoda on the Michigan sideline. He saw the outcome. I thought that was Mason Rudolph for Baby a second. Baby Yoda, don't listen to what's coming out of his mouth. And <laughs> oh, wait. Baby Yoda, just right on Joe Burrow's shoulder. That's why Joe Burrow's so good. Baby Yoda. Makes sense. Uh, also, an important note. Was Baby Yoda the one that videotaped Joe Burrow coming out of the tunnel for the coolest senior right. day walkout yeah. I've ever seen? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that was just... That was that was well done. But by the way, it's, it's, it's not Baby Yoda, right? Like, it's a clone... Stop Stop doing See, this, you're man. the you're that guy. Of Yoda. Like, well, I mean, like, we're just going to get it right, this? right? Do you like, want to just have the Santa Claus conversation with millions of kids right now? Or no, 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 no. I'm just saying that <laughs> John Favreau told us what the timeline is on Baby Yoda, and so that is not actually Baby Yoda. No, it's oh, not. He got a little loud with you, It takes, you, it Max. takes oh, place wow. after the death of Yoda. No, it can't I think you hit a you hit a you hit something. It's a new iteration of Yoda. It's typically when he's wearing his Star Wars pajamas that he got on. By the way, if I wear the Star Wars jogger, my fault. I have a Star Wars Christmas shirt that I'll wear for you next week, you jerk. Uh, let's look at the best of the rest. He does it. Oh, wow. Dean oh. party at his house, dresses his kitchen up like Tatooine. <laughs> I'm not even mad about that. That's not a bad That's idea. Star Wars thought. theme party. Matt Barry's not oh, invited. Oh, theme parties are what this guy does. Oh, so oh yeah. Be careful with the ideas you give him. He must have missed the invite. Let's look at the next top <laughs> group of the top 25. Iowa at 16, Memphis at 17, Minnesota plunges Ooh. 10 spots down to 18, Boise State sits at 19, Cincinnati at 20. That's interesting because Memphis takes on Cincinnati for the AAC title game. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. App State at 21. USC finishes their year at 8 and 4. We'll see if that keeps Clay Helton employed. Virginia up to 23. Significant for Clemson in the ACC championship game that we've been talking about. Navy finishes at 9 and 2. And Oklahoma State stays in at 8 yeah, and 4. I don't, know, four. That, I don't so, know why they're in. Conspiracy theory? To give to Oklahoma, keep Oklahoma another, another ranked another resume. Because yeah. yeah. the committee's doing everything they can to set up the Big 12 to be in the uh, Final Four. Conspiracy theory. Well, now I mean, I, I threw that out there with uh, who got thrown up to eight. Um, uh, eight is for hear. Ohio State. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah. Same kind of thing. Yeah. It's like they're aligning Even it all. Even though we talked about this last week, week one, was, wasn't there five Big 12 teams? Or I think that was week two of the rankings. There was five Big 12 teams in the top 25. The first week there was four. So technically they've been holding it down. This is like having three teams in the top 25 is actually not good for the Big 12 because of how many teams that they ha they've had throughout the whole entire rankings. How many do they have in now? Three. Three. So it's the least that they've had in the last, since week 10. And where are we on conference breakdown for, I'd, I'd assume Big Ten's first. Uh, yes, I don't know that, but I would assume that. I'd assume Big Ten's first. Let's see what we got SEC. here. We got, for the Big Ten, we have Ohio State, Wisconsin, Penn State, Michigan, Iowa, Minnesota, and that's it. So we got six, six. from the Big that's, Ten. That's by yeah, far the most. Yeah, I would just yeah, say yeah, so. Sure. But at one point, 50% of the Big, Big 12 was in 
the right yeah. teams. Yeah, for the Big Ten, yes. Yeah. Six teams from the Big Ten represented, and that's before you get down past 18. So mm. pretty strong pretty strong showing from them top to bottom. You could argue from top to bottom that might be outside. You know, them in the SEC, obviously, no what question. Auburn's done this year is a juggernaut. Georgia, Florida, you know, LSU certainly. Yeah, so. and think about the Big Ten, too, with a team like Minnesota, who's typically not great coming yep. up and having the season. They're having strengthening the conference. I think, I mean, just about everybody thought – more of Nebraska going into the season. They didn't yeah. really do much. We just fell off on Man. Nebraska. We were, we were at Nebraska a early in the game ago. of the year. We're like, <laughs> things are going great. And now yeah. you look back, you're like, our bad. Uh, Oops. What, what a strange world right now. What if I told you there were five SEC teams in the top 25 and Alabama was the lowest ranked one? <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Like what a what a world. That's Speaking of changed. Alabama, oh, it sounds like we got to say. Oh, look at this! Look at this! We've already mentioned Alabama, and we've shown you a little bit of Baby Yoda. Did you see this Baby Yoda Alabama moment? Three seconds to go. Aubrey just has to snap it one more time. This was over! Auburn 48, Alabama 45! <laughs> Auburn's coming to roll you! Final. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is spectacular work. Baby Yoda trolling oh. Alabama. I, I've been saying all day that Roll Tide, they rolled all the way out of the top ten. And so that was I don't care, man, the, the Iron Bowl this year might have been the best game of the season. That, that was, was an absolute blast. I'll tell you why they rolled out of the top five or yeah, they were fifth. So it's, it's the two it's the two factor. They just Oh yeah. yeah, of course. It well, is. And, and it should and it be showed noted. in that game. This was a conversation we had a little bit uh, today on College Football Live. There was a conversation about is Alabama dead. I do want to say this was a young defense. They got a lot of experience. It's going to come back next year, bigger, better, stronger, better than they were, uh, and they're going to get some pieces healthy. And I, I'm not going to sit here and bank on Alabama being down as some great narrative moving forward. I do believe that the SEC, the top of the SEC, particularly. Has, looks like it could be very tough for the next couple of years. So I don't think it's easy for Alabama to stay to the level that we've expected from Alabama. But that being said, I'm not going to sit here and jump on the Alabama's dead bandwagon. Well, but going into the next year, it's the quarterback is going to be the conversation around Alabama. Who's going to be the quarterback? Who's going to be that next guy up? Will it be and Mac? Do, yeah, Mac and do, to his brother. Yeah, I'd say Tal. Is it Tally? Is it Tally? Tally. 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 Tally, Tally, Tally yeah. And they started, I think, at one point, the number was five true freshmen on the defensive side of the ball, and they don't just hand out scholarships to true freshmen at Alabama. So you know those guys were highly rated. They've got game experience. Judy's going to be gone. Ruggs is going to be gone. Devontae Smith's going to be gone. Jalen Waddell is back, though, who at this point, I mean, him and, between him and Jamar Chase is going to be the battle for the it's number one wideout incredible. in the 2021 it's, class. It's the, the, the wide receivers we're seeing in college football now, and you can speak to this, I, I can't remember the last time there were this many Quality it's dominant gonna be a receivers. Deep class. It's gonna be awesome. Because you you look around the country, you have top receiving court courts everywhere. Yep. Clemson, USC, Michigan, Michigan, yep. um, LSU, Texas. Ohio you State. You have these receivers yeah. everywhere. By the Ohio way, State. speaking of yep. that, just saw uh, Lavisca Chenault from Colorado officially declared for the draft You've today. Been on him for a long time. As All right. I mean, coming yeah. into the season, he was easily identified, and he did nothing this year to dispel the rumors that. He's a, like, first, we have a bunch of first-round caliber guys. I don't know how many you can take in the first round, but we yeah. have a lot of first-round caliber. And I will say caliber. this about Georgia. While these receivers are young now, at some point they will be vets. That's right. So I think this year is going to be a great learning experience for those guys, and next year they're going to be better. All right, now it's time to review the weekend of college football. These are your crunch time moments presented by Cheez-Its. We start with Purdue, Indiana. Purdue, check out this play. Aiden O'Connell throws a dart to Bryce Hopkins. Then the ball bounces off his knee. Bam! Bounces off the knee into Jackson Anthem's hands downfield. It looked like Hopkins was going to have the catch, but it goes off his right knee and right into the hands of Anthem. That's how it's drawn up. That's how, that's Harry, that's right. how you practice it, right? Listen, that's one of the most toughest catches because just the trajectory of the ball. It's different, and you got to stop going full speed and stop and go down and catch it. Keep your eyes That's on the ball. Kind of spiral yeah. anymore, well, we'll stay off. in the same game here, Purdue. Another play. It's another catch we have to look at. Oh my David God. Bell slips on his initial route, regains his footing just in time, makes an amazing this is catch incredible. as he twists. We had this as the top play on college football final. I look mean, that. that is I bet his vertical is 40 plus. And you, you, Did he just you, do a miss? Because look at his body control. Catch? That's all body control. Look at that. Oh my God. That's all body control. 
That's a level of, of just strength and core strength that I will never know. Ooh, boiler up. <laughs> no, I mean, man. And then the other one we want to take a look at here, Joe Burrow ties the SEC record for touchdown passes in the season against Texas A&M. Passes to Jamar Chase, 18-yard touchdown. That gives him 44 TDs on the season. You can actually see Mr. Burrow celebrating with his son. Jamar Chase is a full-grown man. So he'll break that a next A grown man. Week. Yeah, he's a grown yeah. man. And he he'll will break, break that, that right? He'll break that this week. Which is, again, it's to gonna go be back a lot to, of something, this weekend. to something you mentioned earlier, it's a testament, and I keep saying this all year, I think you do have a tip of the hat to Ed Orgeron for coming in and saying, okay, I, what I'm doing needs to change. What I'm doing needs to evolve. Yep. And uh, sometimes the best thing a coach can do is hire smart people. And the ability to identify good coaches, good coordinators, hire them, put them on the staff, and then let them s succeed is not something every coach's ego allows. So I have a real respect for what Coach O has been able to do in getting the most out of this Joe Burrow era, yeah. essentially. And I love how he, 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 he speaks of Joe Brady as being that guy that took them from here to here. There's, there's, there's no egos. It's, it's no, it's, I'm the head coach. He gave him his credit, and it's showing out there on the field, man. Those guys are playing on well, top football. He's not even the offensive coordinator. No. Steve Ensinger is the, the offensive right. coordinator. So for the, for the, the, the guy that's got the offensive coordinator title to be able to sit there yep. and get zero credit for what's been going on and kind of allow that to happen, that speaks more to him than it does for Coach Joe hiring another coach for the offensive coordinator. Like, all right, this is the young 30-year-old, you know, star up and come a coach to come in here and – hand us a Heisman the national championship. That's something to be said for that. And you know what gets really interesting now is, because LSU is going to start to find themselves, especially with those two names you just mentioned, in the company that Alabama's usually in. Like, we were talking about the Alabama coaching staff on offense yeah. much in that same way, and they all got poached. Like, what happens the minute someone comes in and offers Joe Brady all of a sudden the next leg up? Which is a reminder of how special what Clemson has and Venables, That's and we true. talk about it all the yeah. time. Being able to keep people in and Well, elegant. it helps that Venables is making more money than head coaches are. That's right. So that helps that out a lot, true. too. Now, <laughs> I think it's okay. one of his kids goes... Plays, I, think I think there's, he, I think some family tie yeah. there. To we had a little uh, foreshadowing earlier okay. in the episode because, Mike, you mentioned Bill Connolly and the pod system. Yeah. Well, we now talk to Bill Connolly. Oh. Bring another voice in. So, <laughs> Bill, Bill, thanks for hanging out with us. Me. We appreciate it. Mike Golick Jr. was just praising your analytics approach on pods specifically. So, uh, we're already in love with everything that you do. Uh, what's your main takeaway from this week? I always find the, the the balance between best and most deserving really, really interesting because we saw Alabama get dumped be, down to 12th because uh, because of most deserving, because their resume is not very good. But Utah State at fifth, uh, despite not having just a whole heck of a lot of uh, strength of schedule on there anyway. So uh, it's always kind of unique to see like the, every team is kind of a special case. And I, I, I don't necessarily mind the top five right here, but it is kind of interesting. Okay, so you said you don't mind the top five. Is there a change that you would make in that top uh, in the top region in general? No, I mean, I think um, knowing what's coming, you know, knowing we have Utah, uh, knowing we have Oklahoma and Baylor playing, I think this is about right. We, we seem to know what all the stakes are moving forward, unless there's just a ridiculous amount of upsets and chaos here uh, on Saturday. We kind of know the stakes, and, and, and it feels about right to me. I think Utah is a better team, you know, most deserving whatever, but I think Utah's a better team than Oklahoma or Baylor right now, so I don't mind them being ahead. I don't mind Ohio State being number one because they have been the best team all year. I don't mind LSU being number two because they have the best resume. So I think it all balances pretty well. We were having a bit of a debate on the show earlier, Bill, about what would happen to Clemson if they lose the ACC championship game. I realize that's a little like saying, what if pigs fly? But if it happens, if they lose, are they still in in your mind? I really don't know if they are. I think, you know, how this tends to work is like the standout resumes are at the top and that's fine. And then you kind of end up in a pool of, of all the resumes that are pretty close together. You know, at that point, you kind of choose the best, I think is how it's, it usually works. And when it comes to Clemson, they are the best, but I don't know if their resume would even match what Utah ends up with, what uh, Oklahoma or Baylor ends up with, what a two loss Georgia ends up with. It's really, it's not their fault the ACC is, is as bad as it's been. ACC is really bad. The ACC, if, if the AAC didn't have UConn, the ACC would probably be below the AAC this year. And uh, I, I, I don't know. I, the resume just isn't going to stand out. They're absolutely one of the four best teams in the country. And I would, I think I would think that even if they lost to Virginia, but it's, it's, uh, it, that would be a very, very curious exercise, I think. 
In the Big 12 championship game, is there one team that benefits more than the other with a win? Yeah, yeah. Probably Baylor because Oklahoma has already beaten Baylor. And so um, I don't know if you get full double credit for doing it twice. So I think at that point, Baylor would have avenged their only loss. Not every team gets that opportunity. Uh, and so maybe that is, you know, good enough to to give them a little bit extra. But I don't think so. I mean, I think Utah would have to lose for it to end up mattering anyway at this point. Bill, we appreciate your time. Thanks for hanging out with us, my friend. Great work as always. Uh, it's gentlemen time to, to argue. We've been, we've been oh boy. holding back on this, and I'm a little afraid because right. I consider each of you on this, on this couch to be somebody that I respect and somebody that I value in my life. I consider us to be friends. That may change now. Because Good. it's time for our way more important rankings. I, I must stress to everybody, we don't make these. No. So we're going to react in the same way that you are as we find Who out. Who makes them? The, we don't know. Okay. The top six <laughs> holiday movies at number six. Jingle all the way. I'm I already, already have a problem with this. What is like that? The, oh, I don't under Santa Claus. Okay, a sneaky underrated movie. I do think that Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. Yeah. Four. I have the Grinch stole the ah, three. Yes. Wrong version. Christmas story is at two. two. Okay. Are they actually gonna get this right? Yes. Oh wow. Two of this, is, this is a disgusting is list. Matt this Barry, is an aberration I, of a list. Matt Barry, I can already see the disgust on your face. <laughs> Biggest gripe. Hands Where the face. hell is Christmas Vacation? Oh, yeah, you did say that was That is a one. top four. Get the Grinch out of there. What? Oh, wow. Out of the top four. <laughs> the Grinch is the one you're taking out, huh? Yeah. Right. I'm not going to get into the annual Die Hard is it a Christmas movie or not debate. Thank you. Where's Christmas Y'all have seen the last Where's of Matt Berry. Where's Elf? <laughs> Where's Elf, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> 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 Where's Elf? Where's Elf? Where's Elf? Oh, wait, that's, 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 a, that's a good you argument. Did, you the Elf. cut one and two off that where list. Did, where did Jingle All the Way come from? All right, listen, I while I am going to be one that states the merits of Jingle All the Way as a movie that features not only Arnold Schwarzenegger, but Sinbad as one that I enjoy annually during the holidays. It is not a better movie than Elf. Elf should absolutely I, be okay, in there, at I least in place. Like, this Christmas should be on there too. This Christmas should totally be on there. Represents. <laughs> 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 yes, it's like a musical too. I would take, I would take the night before. Yeah, over the musical. Single <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I'd take the night before. I would go over a Christmas, Christmas Carol or like the Polar Express over that. Oh Polar yeah, like the Express. classic. Bad the Santa. Classic. That's and classic. of all the versions of Grinch. We went with the Jim Carrey Grinch. I, I mean, need, that's a really good. I need the best, worst of the Grinch. That is the best Grinch. Grinch. I need the name, home address, and Perner number of the person. <laughs> We've been looking for him for weeks. I mean, I mean, there have been some absolutely diabolical. That's the list. worst. To, I haven't seen a top six like that since 2013 when they put out the first playoff ranking. Home Alone. <laughs> wow. And you know what? Classic. I feel like they're almost insulting us with the Christmas music here. Like the Christmas music band. They're like, oh, everybody's happy. Yeah, no, I'm not happy. I don't even it know why Die Hard is on there. And here's what I'll say about a Christmas story. It's overrated. To be at two. Put that one in at six. I think that Christmas Story is overrated in a lot of people's mind for the same reason that Top 40 hits on the radio end up because it's played so much. Oh, Don't you get your own 24-hour marathon? There's no way to be properly rated. But you were talking about how you don't even watch the whole movie in one sitting. I get you, like, in pieces. Pop in every once in a while. So technically, it's not a 24-hour marathon. It's just a day of a Christmas story and one big long movie. It's just a long viewing of multiple. Where is Christmas Vacation? <laughs> this I mean, is let, let's be clear here. Christmas Vacation is one. Elf is two. I could go Home Alone three if we wanted. What? Christmas Vacation <laughs> and Elf are one and two, right? This what? is like if Elf is the top four. To nothing top, is agree. nothing is gonna Elf be in front of Home Alone. Home Alone's top four. No, question. like nothing is gonna be in front. No, of he's home. saying Home Alone. You're saying Home Alone's home one. Is, yes, it's in the right place. Okay, Home Alone is not in the right place. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Christmas That's Vacation is a far superior. Movie. Listen, this is why we are fraternal twins. We, c we can't agree on things right <laughs> now. That's true. That's, that's true. I mean, I've often said that about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else the same Everything except the ability to agree on a Christmas vacation. <laughs> Athletic ability, one in the same. We both do have tiny hands, so that is what yes, we, uh, we, we did share that. that out. We share that moment. What the now it's getting weird. Yeah, it's, that's weirder than that's weirder than Golix and I hand touch <laughs> earlier in the program. Weird is when Finn asked how Jesse Palmer smelled, though. That is a good question. That was that, that was before we Jesse off, Palmer that was smell off. nice. That now, was. Now that. I have to start looking at Jesse on the TV. I don't want to say it another way, but I'm gonna have to start looking at. I Jesse mean, listen, though. Jesse Palmer, like Jesse Palmer, is a good-looking guy. Like. <laughs> You work in close proximity with one of the better looking people on our network. Yeah, Jesse Palmer looks way better than this junk list that we're looking at. 
closest I've come to swearing on our show is this uh, this aberration you of. You can't a, just, swear on the Twitter show. No, 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 that got put to the test when L Duncan was here. I don't know what it is about L that like coaxes <laughs> we all that out of me, but we all were almost on the edge. Yeah, well, L, L would have <laughs> taught kids a new word after welcome, seeing this. Welcome, uh, welcome to my Sports Center life. Yeah, I'm three hour saying. live mic. At Han L Stub said, "Whoever makes these lists just likes to watch the world burn." I agree. That's a fair point. You know, that's, I feel like we've been trolled. Yeah. We've been trolled. The college football playoff didn't give us much that was new that we I'm didn't happy. expect I'm happy. Two today. of my movies are on there. <laughs> it's a great list. You know what? It's the gift that keeps on giving. Your attitude's fantastic. <laughs> Oh my Jerry God! Douglas, I don't, I just he's don't. a he's a he's a content. I'll man give you Home Alone it. for number three. I'll give you that for number three. What? I, it's I think this is. This conversation obvious. is done. This is why there's not a committee for this because could you imagine getting 13 yeah, people to agree work. on this list? That wouldn't work. I'm just not saying, a chance. not a chance. Not All right, a chance, this is Rankings Reaction. We have to hang out here every single week. Check, check us out on Sunday. We will be here hanging out after the rank, rankings come out to give you our reactions to the final rankings. Enjoy conference championship weekend. Thanks, Matt.